start prophesying. Hello, where have you been, people? We've been in the last day since Acts 2. Wake up. Um, so how do we know scripturally we have access to hear God? John 10, 27. Okay? Jesus. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. And how can you follow someone like if you can't hear them? You can't follow someone if you can't hear them. Okay? And so why am I telling you all this? Because as you go against the religious community and you start walking more in the prophetic, you need to know your scripture. <laughs> Because you're going to be like, well, how? Like, where is that in Scripture? And you know what? I had a lot of those conversations when I first started. I didn't know the answers. But I got educated. Now I know the answers because I'm like, well, right here. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> my husband went off. My, you know, if anybody knows my husband, he's very quiet. Normally this is, you know, he's like chill. You guys see him around conferences and stuff. Well, the other day someone commented on YouTube and they were like, well, tell me where there's one prophet is in the Bible. And so Ryan just like, I never said Ryan comment to, to anyone, like ever. And I was shocked. He's like, he's like, well, hold up, Deborah, and uh, he just started saying that. And he's like, oh. he's like, hey, the guy just set himself up for a scriptural debate here. Like, and he just like set himself up. And it's like, but when you know the word, you're confident. Because mm -hmm. you're like, well, you know, like, because when you don't know the word, you're unconfident. Because yeah. someone starts telling you, well, that's not true. And you're like, well, is that not true? Mm. And you start shrinking back a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But when you know the word, you're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. This is what it says in scripture. I'm not going to say that. Mm. Right? Yeah. Jesus. So it's important we know that we can hear him. Because Christianity is about relationship. Christianity is about relationship. It's not religious. Jesus. Yeah. Now, for a theology of prophecy, we have to start with the book of Joel. Joel 2.28, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. So we see in Joel here, Joel gives a prophecy about what's going to come in the last days, right? And what does he say is going to happen? That God was going to pour out his spirit. That men and women, hello, women would be prophesying. This is in Joel, people. Okay, that old men would have dreams and young men would see visions. Now, does that mean that young men, old men can't see visions? No, or young men can't have dreams? No. It's just saying what he's trying to say here is everyone. Yeah. What he's trying to say here is everyone. But he's he's because of the culture that they were in, he's trying to make it very clear. He could have just said. The Spirit is poured out on everyone, period. But he had to take it further because he knew that there was going to be sexist people. He knew that there was going to be ageist people. He knew that there was going to be classist people. And so he had to say, no, I'm going to pour out my, serv my Spirit on my men and maid servants. Doesn't matter your class. I'm going to pour it on my men and women. Doesn't matter your gender. I'm going to pour it on my old and young. Doesn't matter your age. And so Joel addresses here everyone. Everyone has access to the Spirit of God if they do, if he lives inside them and they're his child, right? And so they all have access. So Joel prophesies that this day is coming. Now, we see the fulfillment of this prophecy in Acts 2. Now, some people are like, well, you know, in the last days, we're going to start prophesying. Hello, where have you been, people? We've been in the last days since Acts 2. Wake up. Yeah. Jesus, sorry if that's offensive if you didn't know that, but I'm sorry. Sometimes I get a little bit I mean, when you're on YouTube, people throw punches at you a lot. So you, you gotta, you throw some back, okay? <laughs> uh, but anyway, but okay, so Acts 2, 14 through 18. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judah, and all that you dwell in Jerusalem, be this known to you, and hearken to my words. For these men are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing as in but the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days. So there we see that Peter is saying this prophecy Joel spoke is now fulfilled. So this is the start of the last days. Pentecost started the last days. Pentecost started the last days. Jesus. And then it says exactly what I said in Joel. So he just repeats exactly what it said there. Okay? And so when Pentecost happens and the Holy Spirit falls, that's when we had access to the gift of prophecy, to dreams, you know, to visions. And it's not that they didn't have that before, but it's that everyone had access now. It wasn't just the prophets or the priests or something like that. It was everybody. 
And so that's the differentiation there. Jesus' death allows us all to be holy and righteous before the throne. So now we all have access to the gifts where it used to just be set apart people. Okay, so now we all have access. And so even though I'm a prophet, it's like, it's like, it doesn't, like, I don't, how do I say this? Like, I think sometimes people put, like, prophets up here, but it's just like, prophets are like you too. Like, we have the same thing as you. It's just more. That's it. Like, you have the same thing. That's just our job. You know? Okay. When does prophecy end? When does prophecy end? Heaven. Heaven. How do we know this? Okay? 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails, but where they are prophecies, they will cease. Now, the Reformed community takes that out of context. And they say what? They say, well, you know, it's when the Bible was written, men ceased. Mm -hmm. Right? No, that's when we get to heaven. Okay, so why? Because we have to keep prophesying and encouraging the church. Okay, so what is prophecy? What is prophecy? Okay, well, this is what Paul tells us it is. Let's go into 1 Corinthians 14, 3 through 5. 1 Corinthians 14, 3 through 5. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to man. He who speaks in tongues edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you prophesy, for he who prophesies is greater. Now, what we learn from this verse is that there's four keys to prophecy. One is for edification. Okay? What does edification mean? Because we say that, well, it's for edification. Well, what does that mean? Let's be real here for a second. And what it means is it says this. The act of one who promotes another's growth in Christian wisdom, happiness, holiness, and basically helps you grow in your Christian walk. Yeah. So that's one of the purposes of prophecy. So when someone prophesies over you, they should help you grow in your Christian wisdom, help you be happy again, walk in holiness, and help you in your Christian walk. That's what edification means. Okay? Then there's exhortation, which is encouragement and comfort. That's when, you know, I don't know, someone's in pain, they're mourning, they're depressed, something's going on with them. And you speak that word that brings them comfort. Okay? So prophecy can do that. You can comfort them. You can tell them what God thinks about them. You can tell them what God's saying to them right now in this moment. And it comforts them. Jesus. And then, um, obviously, comfort is kind of redundant. But it also means calming and consoling. So you sit with them. You listen. Um, and then it edifies the church. And so prophecy is also for the church. So corporate words, giving things to the church. Jesus. Um, now, I want to make one mention here. Because... Prophecy is also about holiness, okay? One of the definitions of edification is to help people in holiness, okay? And so I think sometimes, like, not that's not condemnation, but prophecy is to help point them more towards holiness, okay? It's like, hey, bro, maybe you should do this. Not, you're an idiot for doing this, okay? You see the difference there? It's like it's the same thing, but it's the way you said it, okay? And so it's like we have to correct in love, not correct in condemnation, okay? Because when we correct in condemnation, we're agreeing with the Antichrist. Because he brings condemnation, not Jesus, okay? And so but we do correct, okay? So I believe that we can correct in prophecy. However, if you started prophesying last week, you might want to wait to do that. Because if you tell someone they're doing this sin and they ain't doing it, it ain't going to be good for you. <laughs> They're going to be like, don't you ever talk to me again. Who are you? You know. And so there's a time. Allow your gift to develop. Get some under your belt that you know are accurate before you start running around rebuking everybody. Okay? Because just because you feel it doesn't mean you have to say it. Amen. Okay? I think sometimes people are prophetically immature. Just because you can feel someone's sin doesn't mean you got to talk to them about it. Because then you're the devil. You're just bringing up everyone's sin all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you want someone bringing up your sin all the time? No. So don't bring up everyone else's sin all the time either. Now, but there is times where it's like your friend is about to jump into fire, and you have to be that water bucket that puts it out, you know? And so there is times you have to say something, but you have to know if it's you that's supposed to say something. And sometimes God has told me, let them go in the fire. Mm-hmm. And that sounds bad, but he chastises. Mm-hmm. He disciplines. Mm-hmm. He deals with his kids. They're his kids. Mm-hmm. And so if I've already talked to them about this five times, sometimes it's not my time to talk to them about it anymore. Okay. Sometimes it's my, my time to be quiet and let the Lord do it. Yeah. So you have to have discernment on time. Yes.
Now, I think what's cool about prophecy is that we can know the future, but sometimes we don't know all of the future. Mm -hmm. Okay? And why is that? 1 Corinthians 13, 9. We prophesy in part and know in part. And sometimes, I think if we're honest, sometimes we wish that verse wasn't true. We're like, can't you just tell me everything, Jesus? Wouldn't that be nice? You know, I want to know everything so I can be at peace. I know what's gonna. I know. I know that Bob's gonna walk in the room at two o'clock, and this is what he's gonna say to me. And I know that my boss is gonna say this in the morning, and and I'm at peace now. And God's like, that's funny, you know. And it's like, now he will give you a heads up, you know. It's like yeah. he told me this morning. He said the second person in line is gonna, you know, get hit by the Holy Ghost. And there was that woman right there in her black, and I saw her in black before I came here. I saw her, and so it was like. She's like, you call me out again? Yeah. But, but anyway, it's just like, but you know, so sometimes you do. But I didn't see every single one of you. Right. You know, it's like some people I saw, you know, but some people I didn't. And it's like, but maybe there's a reason I'm not supposed to know. You know, and so it's just like, you have to yield to the mystery of God. Mm -hmm. Because as you yield to the mystery of God, you have more peace. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we want to know everything because we want to keep ourselves safe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Someone said fear. Yes, exactly. It's like we're like, well, something else might happen to me. If I know everything, I'll be safe. And sometimes people get involved in the prophetic because they want to feel safe. Mm -hmm. They want to know everything that happens in the future and they want to feel safe and secure. But you have to find that security in not knowing about the future. You have to find security in Jesus. Yes. 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 You have to find your security in his character, yes. in his comfort, yes. in what he speaks to you. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to get through this. I love you. You know, and you know, there's times when I, the Lord has told me things, and I'm like, I wish you would have like told me that. But it's like, but I'm like, I just have to trust in your goodness right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know why I didn't know the whole part of that, you know. But all right, I'm gonna trust in your goodness, yeah. and that's enough sometimes. And it's gonna allow you to rest because I feel like I, I used to be like prophetically crazy. I'm like, oh, what's gonna happen? God, what's gonna happen? Like, what's gonna happen? About this? What's gonna happen? About this? And he's like, whoa. Well, I, I maybe he didn't say, well, maybe that's me, but, you know, that, <laughs> But seriously, though, it's like we can't be possessed with knowing the future. We have to be possessed with knowing God. Yeah. And by being possessed with knowing God, we know the future. Yeah. You know what I mean? So don't go after prophecy as much as you go after him. Because as you go after him, the prophecy will just go. Yeah. 